Hello everyone. So we might kick off. Um, it's absolutely lovely to be with you today. Um, my name is Megan O'Connor. Um, I'm a board member of QQI. I'm the deputy president and vice president for academic affairs for the Union of Students Ireland. And I have the privilege of being your MC for the next hour. So um, it is absolutely fantastic to see you all here today. Um, a huge amount of work has gone into this strategy. So it's absolutely brilliant that we're all here to celebrate that and to hear a number of reflections on it. Um, we're going to be hearing from a number of our FET and higher ed students um, and a range of other stakeholders um, during the next hour or so. Um, we're also going to be having some really interesting perspectives from two different international jurisdictions today. Um, so be sure to stay tuned in. Um, so we're going to kick off first with our first speaker. Um, Joanne Harman is the current chair of the QQI board, having served on the board um, since 2012. She's the head of business and educational support with the Health and Safety Authority and has worked in communications, education and youth development roles in the public, private and nonprofit, um, nonprofit sector. She's also chair um, trained as an executive coach and mediator and Joanne will now offer her reflections on the new QQI Statement of Strategy 2022-2024. Thank you very much uh, Megan. Good morning everybody um, and I'd like to welcome you all to the launch of QQI's fourth Statement of Strategy uh, which will cover the period 2022 to 2024. Today's programme will include a presentation by the Chief Executive of QQI, Dr. Porik Walsh, um, the priorities and objectives of the new strategy and how it builds upon our previous strategy. A key enabler of this strategy will be to strengthen our strategic partnerships to affect system change. So we're very pleased, therefore, to have contributions today from our many partners in further and higher education from Ireland and overseas and from student representatives. In this strategy, QQI commits to a vision of Ireland that offers diverse, high quality further and higher education opportunities. It aims to enable learners to reach their full potential through achieving qualifications that are widely valued nationally and internationally. And this is the first QQI strategy since the establishment of a new Department of State with responsibility for further and higher education, research, innovation and science. QQI is the only agency under the aegis of the new department that has responsibility for the further and higher education sectors. So we're in, therefore in an excellent position to contribute to the development of a more integrated further and higher education system for the benefit of all learners. Um, the priorities and objectives identified in the new statement build upon the priorities from the current strategy and are also informed by the department strategy that was published last March. The period 2022 to 24 will be challenging, but I believe it will also be an exciting time for QQI. As Ireland and the world continue to battle with the COVID pandemic, QQI will use the three year period to implement the expanded role afforded to it by the Qualifications and Quality Assurance Amendment Act 2019. For many people, QQI's role as a quality assurance body is visible. But as part of this strategy, we're determined to put a renewed focus on our role in the qualification system and its development. Another key feature of the new strategy is a renewed emphasis, not just on information about qualifications, but about the opportunities for learners to access those qualifications. The period of the strategy will see QQI provide better information to learners on the many opportunities available to them to access recognised and quality assured qualifications in a more connected and integrated tertiary education system. Learners will have greater choice through the access provided to new awarding bodies to offer their awards in the national framework of qualifications. There will be increased availability of new and innovative qualifications, including micro credentials, and learners will be offered better protection through QQI's monitoring of academic integrity. International learners coming to study in Ireland can have greater confidence through QQI's awarding of the international education mark to qualifying English language and higher education providers. Over the course of this strategy, QQI will build upon the work we undertook in 2020 when our analysis of the response to COVID-19 demonstrated continuing confidence in the quality and reputation of Irish further in higher education and training 
despite the physical closure of institutions. As part of the strategy, QQI will ensure that better information is made available to learners and other stakeholders through a new and more outwardly focused QQI website, which I'm pleased to say will be launched next week, and through our commitment to developing an improved and enhanced national learners database, Qualifax. We'll continue to develop the Irish Register of Qualifications, which contains detailed information on the quality assured further and higher education qualifications that are included in the NFQ. As the only agency with a remit covering all parts of the further and higher education sectors, QQI will fully leverage its unique position within leading international peer networks. It will carry out its own independent analysis to establish strong and credible leadership in quality and qualifications matters. We're strongly committed through this statement of strategy to supporting the national vision of an Ireland with a further and higher education and research system that supports people in reaching their full potential. A vision that creates value and prosperity in a cohesive, sustainable and vibrant society. And finally, we look forward to working towards this vision in partnership with all of you here today. So thank you very much for that. And Megan, I'll hand back to you now. Thank you so much, Joanne. Um, so now we're going to turn to hear from our students and stakeholders in the first of our video messages. Right. Reading this statement, I'm pleased to see that QQI's role is adapting to the pressures brought about by COVID-19. E-learning, for example, provides an excellent opportunity to enhance the learning experience. It will be very important for QQI to guide these changing practices and ensure the learner is always at the centre of them. It's great that the strategy is seeking to facilitate the student voice and influencing system level policies, procedures and governance processes. One of the primary aims of QQI is to ensure a quality education for learners. And therefore, it's so important that an empowered student voice is involved throughout a wide range of QQI processes. I'm also pleased to see a focus on the UN development goals, which is inclusive education. And I hope this means that QQI's commitment to engage the student voice will expand to those who find it hard to get their voice heard. Inclusive education is clear in QQI's expanded mandate to cover private tertiary education. Those in private tertiary education deserve the same standards that QQI ensures in public institutions. Similarly, QQI's stewardship of the fund to protect learners where private providers cease operating will be very important in enhancing the inclusivity of our education system by protecting some of the most vulnerable learners. Overall, throughout the strategic priorities of information, protection, development and insight, it's clear that QQI is a dynamic organisation seeking to ensure the students can experience high standards in their learning experience. And I'm pleased to see that the student voice is going to play a greater role in these priorities. Thanks. Hello, my name is Anya Leonard and I was asked to provide a reflection on the strategy statement for the QQI. So from looking at the statement, I can see that there are four main priorities of the QQI within the strategy statement, including information, protection, development and insight. So the first priority information tells us that the QQI is dedicated to providing school leavers with vital information on the possible education routes that they might be able to might want to take. We also learned that the QQI are endeavouring to allow all learners to access accredited qualifications that will help them progress professionally or educationally speaking. I feel that this is very important to open up all avenues for all potential learners for all potential career paths. Second priority is protection. The implementation of stronger regulations to protect learners I feel is very viable, a vital part of quality assurance. So providing a higher quality learning experience to international learners and promoting and maintaining academic integrity, I feel is a very good 
quality and strategy that the QI have in place. The third priority is development. So driving and stimulating provider development while supporting new programs and strong quality assurance among ATVs creates many opportunities for learners to receive different accredited qualifications to, so they might go on to progress into careers that they might like. The fourth priority is insight. Evaluating the experience of remote and blended learning also um, goes into the avenue of authentic assessment, seeking to increase transition points and enabling progression pathways between different providers. I feel this is very important because it also opens up more avenues for students and the different careers they might want to dive into. From the strategic report, it's clear to see that QQI have a strong commitment to providing relevant, timely and credible insights for students in the face of emerging issues. I feel that this report has the learner in mind and will have a greater outcome for all associated with QQI. Hi there, I'm Andrew Brownlee, CEO of Solace, and I'd just like to wish QQI well on the launch of their statement of strategy today. They really are a, a critical and valued partner of Solace. And I think if you look at some of the areas that we've worked together on over the, the last year or so, it really does underline the importance of that strong working relationship. They're now part of a core FET strategy implementation group with the department as the policymaker, ourselves as the funder, the ETBs as the provider, and QQI as the, the, the quality assurer and quality enhancement um, driver. And I think that's a really important dynamic, which will serve as well as we, we implement the strategy. We also have a strong working partnership with them around apprenticeship, both in Solace's role as the coordinating provider for craft apprenticeship, and also in the transition to a new oversight structure, in the, which was flagged in the action plan for apprenticeship 2021 to 25. We've, we've been proud to co-sponsor a review of level six provision, which is now complete and which will again give us a platform to look at learning pathways across an integrated tertiary system. We've worked together on the QQI's inaugural quality review of ETBs, which I think is a real milestone development for the sector um, as well. And we're also talking to QQI actively around the future of qualifications and, and micro credentials, which is going to be critical if we're going to move to that more flexible, fluid system where people can dip in and dip out of learning. It's great to see, you know, all of those areas reflected in the new strategy and the commitment and the strategy to further developing providers, to establishing and, and enhancing those strategic partnerships to affect system change. And I think that common theme throughout the strategy of really building those kind of learning pathways that can fit within a wider tertiary system. So congratulations on the launch of a great strategy and I look forward to continuing our great relationship. So next, we are going to hand over to Dr. Podrick Walsh, who is the CEO of QQI, and is going to provide us with a brief overview as to how we have already begun to implement our new strategy. <clears throat> Thanks very much, uh, Megan, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, in January 2021, we began work on developing our fourth statement of strategy, which the QQI board approved last September. We are formally launching the strategy today and in it, we are seeking to build on the priorities of our current strategy. Since our establishment in 2012, we placed significant emphasis on our quality assurance functions. As we've reflected over the past year, we believe it is important to put a renewed emphasis on our role in the qualification system. As the custodian of the National Framework of Qualifications, the NFQ, and as an awarding body in our own right. The qualification system, which includes the NFQ, other tools and all awarding bodies, has many strategic partners that need to be brought together for future planning. In 2019, we received new powers through amending legislation to widen the range of awarding bodies that can have qualifications included in the NFQ. The power to regulate the provision of English language education on a statutory basis for the first time and the authority to protect the integrity of education and training through highlighting the dangers posed by the proliferation of global contract cheating services and so-called SA mills. The above considerations have fed into the development of our new statement of strategy that will cover the period 2022 to 24. In it, we commit to focusing on four priorities. Information, providing better information and opportunities for learners protection, 
implementing strengthened regulation to protect learners. Development, driving and stimulating provider development. And insight, publishing authoritative analysis and insight. A tangible output in our focus on the priority of information will be to redevelop, enhance and modernize the National Learners Database Qualifacts as a resource of quality assured qualifications included in the National Framework of Qualifications. A key commitment in our focus on the priority of protection will be to establish the statutory Learner Protection Fund to provide security to learners in independent private education and training providers offering QQI awards. Specifically, in our focus on the priority of development, we will facilitate increased autonomy and flexibility for mature independent providers of higher education by enabling them to pursue delegated authority to make their own awards. A tangible output in our focus on the priority of insight will occur next year, when on the occasion of the 10th anniversary of QQI's establishment, we will reflect on the achievements of the past decade with a series of publications and events over the course of the year. This will culminate in a major conference, we hope, uh, in the Crow Park Conference Centre in person in October 2022. We hope to make this conference an annual, not to be missed event. We will not be able to achieve the challenging objectives set out in the four identified priorities without the support of two key enablers, that of partnership and excellence. If there is one thing we've learned during the past 20 months, it is the importance of strengthening strategic partnerships to affect system change. Whether this was through the efforts of all those involved in the National Tertiary Education System COVID-19 Steering Group, led by the Department, or the information provided by individual further and higher education providers and by learner representative bodies that allow QQI to analyze and report on the impact of COVID-19 on teaching, learning and assessment in Irish tertiary education. We also want to use the launch of this strategy to highlight the establishment of a new body, the Irish Quality and Qualifications Forum, IQQF. We want to use the IQQF to further develop and promote a greater understanding of the qualification system and the learning pathways through it. The use of information from the labour market to inform the design of educational qualifications, greater connectivity between suppliers of qualifications and other users of qualification, especially employers. Enhanced data collection that can help us better understand how qualifications are being used and new ideas about how to facilitate the validation of non-formal and informal learning. Our final key enabler is excellence, or more properly, building organisational excellence. Over the past year, we've recruited new staff to enable us to deliver on our new regulatory functions. They bring with them a range of experience from public and private higher education providers, from the English language sector, from regulatory agencies, and from the private sector. We will only be able to retain these staff and our established workforce if we can provide opportunities for our people by continuing to build an agile, engaged, responsive and motivated workforce. To be able to deliver on the challenge and ambition contained in the statement of strategy and to accommodate the new staff that have joined the organisation to enable us to fulfil our new statutory functions, I deemed it essential to restructure the organisation. Following the approval of the Statement of Strategy by the QQI Board in September, a new structure came into operation last week. To reflect QQI's role as an awarding body, all functions related to QQI awards, the development of standards, initial access to more awards for new providers, re-engagement of existing providers, validation and revalidation of programmes, programme monitoring, and the certification of learners have all been placed under the responsibility of Barbara Kelly as Director of Awards. The functions of qualifications information, learning opportunities, and the monitoring and review of all our universities, technological universities, institutes of technology, and the education and training boards have been integrated and placed under the responsibility of Brian McGuire as Director of Integration. The functions of international education, research and innovation, and international mobility and prior learning have been placed under the responsibility of Jim Murray as Director of Development. Our corporate services, 
will be bolstered by the additional responsibility for the statutory assessment of the corporate fitness for private providers offering QQI awards and providers offering regulated English language education, as well as the management of the statutory learner protection fund. All of these will fall under the responsibilities of Kleena Curley as Director of Corporate Services. Finally, the last 20 months have stressed to me the importance of partnership if we wish to affect system change. The principle of we can't do this without you. This is reflected in the areas of stakeholder engagement and internal and external communications being complemented by our role in the enhancement and protection of academic integrity. Responsibility for these functions falls to Karina Maguire, who has assumed the role of head of partnerships. These changes, which came into effect last week, will, I believe, enable QQI to deliver on the ambition outlined in the statement of strategy. I want to thank all our partners, colleagues, for moving forward to work with my colleagues on the executive, established and new, with our board members, and with our many partners and stakeholders in delivering on the ambition we have set out in this statement of strategy over the next three years. Thank you very much. Back to you, Megan. Thank you so much, Audrey. And now I think we're going to very appropriately move on uh, to hear some more messages from those partners um, in students and stakeholders across the sector. Hi, my name is Jeremy Kennedy. Um, I'm a student in Donegal ETB and a learner representative on the inaugural review team. Doing a bit of work with QQI. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to uh, offer my impressions of the statement of strategy. Um, very impressed overall, you know, like the language of what's written down and the uh, kind of the direction that QQI is heading. I think there's been a, um, a lot of um, growth, you know, very positive growth, kind of forced on um, education in general in Ireland. And um, the the providers, you know, ETBs, um, higher level education, uh, the, the providers have uh, stepped up and 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 proven, shown, you know, that given the resources and given the the backing from the governing bodies, that um, that the, the 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 staff on the ground, the teachers, the tutors, the support staff, can can meet the needs of the learners. You know, there's a lot of positive momentum. Uh, resources were made available. Um, a lot of the transition to IT, to online learning, blended learning, uh, different means, different ways of assessing um, and gaining certification. Um, it, it's been proven that it can happen and happen effectively. And I guess that's my biggest thing, you know, that 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 I see from this. Hopefully, nothing gets too bogged down in the um, in the in the in the in the uh, government in, in the in the statutory needs you know let's let's try and up, update maybe some of the uh, modules and such you know make it okay to um, to kind of progress quicker to meet the needs of uh, what's going on in our local communities you know the, the, the needs of the employers and such and, um, and 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 the students needs the learners needs overall you know and I think uh, I think QQI in, in, in the way this document's presented is, is very much ready to do that thanks. Hi, my name is Naomi Aljo and I am a PhD researcher at Trinity College Dublin. I'm a past NSTEP student associate and I'm the author of the 2021 report on postgraduate student engagement and decision making, fostering connected learning communities. I was disappointed that I couldn't attend today's launch of the QQI strategy for 2022 to 24. Um, however, I did want to offer some reflective comments uh, from the perspective of a postgraduate researcher here in Ireland. Of note, I would like to commend QQI for shining a spotlight on partnership as a core value, but also as a key enabler to the strategy. Partnership, I suppose, can encompass a variety of stakeholders, but I would like to comment on student partnership in this instance. There can sometimes be maybe misunderstandings or misinterpretations between student engagement and partnership. So in terms of the definition here, student partnership is that practice that both drives forward, but also develops 
uh, from meaningful student engagement, which recognizes that need really to rebalance uh, power dynamics in higher education and seeks to enable that culture of change through collaboration and also shared responsibility between staff and students. A KPI or a key performance indicator in the strategy to measure this is that the student voice and student partnership will be visibly influencing system level policies, procedures and governance um, processes. And this is really important because we're, we're going a step further than just having that token seat at the table. Um, and instead, the student voice, I suppose, is being heard, it's being addressed and it's being responded to in a transparent and a meaningful way where we can actually see visible change, which is really exciting. So thank you very much and I hope you enjoy the rest of the launch. Hello. I'd like to congratulate Quality and Qualifications Ireland on their new strategy. Across the Higher Education Authority, we have a close working relationship with QQI, underpinned by a memorandum of understanding. We work both formally and informally to progress our shared ambition for higher education in Ireland. But it's not just in Ireland. Higher education operates in a global environment where standards and quality are essential to assure our offering to prospective students, but also to employers and those looking to invest in Ireland. The careful analysis of quality and qualifications processes carried out by QQI gives reassurance that our system is striving to be the best it can be in teaching and learning, in research, and in the development of skills to enable our students to progress and excel in their personal and professional lives. Higher education is constantly changing. We are seeing increasing flexibility in the way in which people engage with learning in different ways, by distance, online, through work, anytime, anywhere, short courses to long programmes. As this change gathers pace, we need to keep a careful watch on quality, on the recognition of learning and ensuring that the value of the underlying qualification is maintained. This is why the work of QQI in recognising, validating and quality assuring provision is so important. So I welcome this new strategy and the commitment to objectivity, transparency and partnership. I welcome QQI's ongoing commitment to working with the HEA and the sector to identify and promote best practice within HEIs, but also nationally and internationally. We have worked closely with QQI to deliver our technological universities, to enhance the quality of postgraduate research through the Doctoral Education Advisory Forum, and through our strategy and performance dialogue processes and QQI's Kinchu reviews. We will continue to work with QQI into the future to help you realise your strategy and our shared ambition for our vitally important higher education and research system. Absolutely fantastic reflections there. I think we'll take a lot from it. Um, so next we are going to move on and hear from David Jones, who is our first international perspective today. Um, David is a champion of work-based learning, apprenticeships and accessible education for people of all ages. Uh, he has achieved many um, accolades, including an OBE for his contribution to further education and training. Uh, David is also currently the chair of Qualifications Wales and has some very important messages for us. OK, um, Pranda or Ogleth Duran Cymru, good afternoon from North East Wales. It's a real pleasure to be here this afternoon. Um, I have a background in FET. I'm a product of FET and my career has been in FET. Um, as you just said, um, I'm currently the Chair of Qualifications Wales, but I'm not here in that role today. And I should just say for the record, the views I express here today are not are my own and not necessarily the, the views or the policies of Qualifications Wales, nor indeed of the Welsh Government to whom uh, we are responsible. Um, I've got 10 minutes, so you probably look at my title and thought that's quite a long title. Powering FET through collaboration, integration and digitalization, qualifications as enablers for dynamic demand-led learning and skills. But hopefully I can do that um, some service in, in 10 minutes because those are things I'm really passionate about. Powering FET, collaboration, integration, digitalization, qualifications as enablers, I'll talk a bit more about that shortly, and dynamic demand-led learning and skills. So I'll, I'll do that by looking back a little, 
then returning to the present and then looking forward. So at the end of 2019, I decided to leave my job as a CEO at a, a large college. And one of the things I set up to do, I uh, was appointed as the chairman of Qualifications Wales. Qualifications Wales is the regulator of general qualifications, that's um, um, GCSEs and A-levels in our country and vocational qualifications. And the sort of things that were happening with Qualifications Wales at that time was very much a focus on the review of vocational subjects, making sure that the qualifications that were there were the right ones. And it was very much about developing this dynamic demand-led approach uh, relevant to uh, what business needed at that time. Um, another priority at the end of 2019 was uh, developing new qualifications because there's a new, a new curriculum in Wales for three to 16 year olds. And it was about developing new qualifications to work with that. And very much our approach um, as Qualifications Wales has been about developing new qualifications, as I said earlier, as enablers and, and not drivers. So what do I mean by that? One of my big concerns as somebody who's worked in education for many years and still does is that within schools and colleges and perhaps elsewhere, sometimes there is too much teaching to the test. Sometimes lecturers and teachers are too interested in what the exam is at the end, so they just want to, to, to get to that point rather than perhaps concentrating and putting more effort into teaching and learning. I, I personally believe too much time is spent on doing assessment and preparing um, for assessment. And I think some of that is delivered, is driven by the key performance indicators that the government set. And an interesting book you may have read, but I, I refer to it anyway, is a book called The, the Testing Charade, Pretending to Make Schools Better by Daniel Koretz, a 2017 publication. It's worth a read if, you, if you're interested in that angle. Um, another thing we were doing at the end of 2019 was beginning an agenda on something that I'm really passionate about is moving from e-learning um, to e-assessment, but recognising significant uh, apprehension and some opposition from, from stakeholders. And the final thing that was uh, in our minds at that time was something that didn't directly involve qualifications Wales, but an important development. And it links to Padraig's comment earlier on about integration. There's an integration strategy in Wales with the development and the launch within the next two years of a new council for tertiary education and research. And, and that's a new development that will bring together all of the management and the funding of FET and universities and work-based learning and apprenticeships right across Wales. And it's interesting in the work that I now do that the models of governance within education quality just vary slightly across the UK and Ireland. Lots of similarities, but some different differences as well. And that was the end of 2019. And certainly as somebody who was semi-retiring, I was thinking that that might be a relatively nice way to spend the next few years. And then COVID came along. So it's been a very challenging time as a qualifications uh, regulator, as I'm sure you'll know, and um, we've we've effectively had in 2020 and 2021 a situation where qualifications have been unregulated or minimally regulated, and we've just had to adapt in the interest of learners to do the right thing. And I'm confident that that what we've done as regulators, working very much in conjunction with Ofcall in England. SIA in Northern Ireland and with SQA in Scotland is, is done, done the right thing. Um, but that doesn't mean that there are real concerns about the impact on standards um, of what we've had to do in those two years. The other thing that was interesting about the COVID period, and we're still in it, of course, very much so, is that more people than ever began talking and thinking about qualifications and probably Lots of people now think they're an expert in qualifications when maybe maybe they're not. But one of the key issues was fairness. And I think perhaps people assume that in the past, the approaches to qualifications were all totally fair. But the reality is no system of qualifications is totally fair. It's about trying to make it as equitable and as fair as possible. But I think 2020 and 21 shone a real close light on that and has opened a really positive debate about where we go in the future. And again, I referred to a publication by one of my ex-board members of Qualifications Wales uh, last autumn, as it happens, a book called um, 
is assessment fair? How specific can you be and how apt? By Isabel and Nisbet and Stuart Shaw. That's an, another useful publication that certainly I, I've, I've enjoyed reading. So as an organisation, as a regulator, an independent regulator reporting to government, um, we had to adapt. And again, referring back to many of the things said this morning, we had to make a step change in collaboration. I think it's fair to say sometimes as regulators, it's very easy to have a quite a, um, uh, an approach where you're, you're above all the centres, the schools and colleges, and sometimes seeing as the, the controller, the expert there. And perhaps there's been a big lesson from um, the COVID period. And I think the speaker just before me picked up on this. Um, we now are really seeing the benefits of collaboration and we've done a lot more at Qualifications Wales. So that takes us up to the present. Where are we going moving forward? Well, we are also developing a new organisational strategy and there are five or six important parts of that strategy. And um, the first one might seem pretty obvious, but it's really learning from COVID. It's been, nobody would have wanted it, but there's genuine learning to be had from the COVID period and building on that collaboration, genuinely reaching out. And we are putting in place more and more ways that we work with, um, with others. And I think that makes us a better organization. Also really facing up to the fact that assessment really is a lot more than exams, particularly in the FET space, but beyond that, we all know there's non-examined assessment. It's been around for a long time, but I still think too many people see examinations as being uh, the main part of assessment. And Sydney, if I go back to my experience in FET at the college, uh, I've drawn from that experience of all sorts of types of assessment to inform my thinking and how I can contribute to qualifications Wales. The other interesting one is around the roles of teachers and lecturers in assessment and awarding of qualifications. Again, there's been a far greater involvement of those teachers over the last two years in, in informing the final decisions. And we're trying to learn from that and say, where is the best practice right across the world? Because I think um, teacher involvement in assessment is here to stay for a longer for a longer period. And we've done some initial research. We've looked at models in 12 different countries, different models. One of them was Ireland, by the way. And then we've undertaken more in-depth case studies uh, looking at Estonia, uh, New Zealand, Ontario, Canada uh, and Queensland, Australia. And that's informing our thinking about how we move forward and influencing these new qualifications that we're going to develop alongside the new curriculum in Wales. Then I go back to the role of digitalisation and e-assessment. Many people are frightened and give excuses not to do it. So it needs an evolutionary approach, but it is something that I, as a chair of a regulator, I'm keen for us to play our part in and to move it forward. And that requires resource. It requires the right resource to take it forward in, 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 in the right way. Um, finally, and it's quite a big area, particularly linking to FET, is the impact of COVID um, on the businesses and the economy that is served by FET. When I ran a college, my approach was very much about looking at how I serve the local economy and local communities. And we've only, I think, got to look at the changes in working practices to some hybrid and home working and ask ourselves, how does that impact upon what FET now needs to offer? The other thing that I think has happened over the last 20 months or so is that we've seen some new emerging sectors we've seen some sectors grow faster than we had anticipated and then in contrast we've seen the demise of some sectors and the gradual um, contracting of others so we need an FET system that is able to respond to that so that's where the dynamic side of this demand-led system comes in I think the years of where we think we can develop qualifications in one year deliver them in one way and they're still going to be acceptable in 10 or 20 years have long gone and i think it's now about developing through micro credentials and others new approaches but recognizing that you something you might develop today might well indeed be out of date in three to five years time and that's real real opportunities they're linked to the environment and the future of um of, of the, the well-being of future generations as well and then, so that gives you a feel for what we, we're doing in Wales. If I can just finish off by just quickly referring to the QQI strategy, and can I just congratulate everyone um, on the document? Uh, I think you've picked up many of the issues that we're dealing with in Wales and many others in well, as well. And I have to say that 
having read it in relation in preparedness for today, it's certainly something I'm going to make sure that other people in Wales see because I think there's some real learning to be had from the work that you're now going to do. But I um, commend you on your focus on learners, on uh, your commitment to engagement and partnerships um, through better information and opportunities for learners, and that important thing about strengthening regulation uh, to protect learners. Uh, and, and finally, I think an important part for me is that issue around driving and stimulating provider development. One of the things I've done of late and I'm still doing is leading some of the reviews of the ETBs in Ireland. And that's been a really interesting process. And I detect a real appetite within the ETB sector for growth. And I think with the leadership that QQI is showing through its commitment to excellence and being a leader for that within the system, I think Ireland is well placed if you all work together to make good step forward. Final message for me as a Welshman, it's always good to work with colleagues in Ireland. So Jochen Lauer, thank you very much for the pleasure of being part of your very important launch today. Thank you. Thank you so thank much, you so. Um, Very, very welcome contributions. So now we have some more reflections on the statement of strategy from many more of QQI's stakeholders. Um, and I think the diversity in these stakeholders is indicative of the connections we need to ensure we're making across the entire system. Good morning. I'm very happy to be here this morning to say a few words at this the launch of QQI's Statement of Strategy. I very much welcome QQI's Statement of Strategy to cover the next three years and recognise, as outlined in the start strategy statement, the challenging times ahead as we emerge from this pandemic and the necessity as providers and regulators to work collectively to ensure that the quality of learner experiences and the standing of the awards and outcomes they achieve are enhanced and that their educational experience support them in their personal and professional lives. I particularly welcome QQI's commitment to ensuring a greater level of coherence in its actions to support and enable the developing tertiary sector, both further and higher education, to achieve the significant goals identified by government and the ambitions of the sector to develop collaboratively and strategically. The commitment in the strategy statement to support providers in their efforts to ensure that lifelong learning through clearly defined quality assured pathways embedded within the system is welcome and builds on the work undertaken to date by QQI and the ETBs. The recognition given to the need to increase the range of qualifications available for learners, including digital qualifications and micro credentials, recognizes the changing education landscape, not just in Ireland, but across the global community of which we are a part. Central to the achievement of the ambition set, set out in this strategy statement is the need to work collaboratively and in consultation with all departments. I welcome the commitment given by QQI to developing further the already strong collaboration links with our sector and others to achieve ultimately what is our shared priority, delivering high quality, relevant experiences and qualifications for all learners. Thank you. Congratulations to QQI on the launch of your new Statement of Strategy 2022 to 2024. I'm particularly taken by the vision articulated in the strategy, which presents a diverse and high quality offering for further and higher education in Ireland. It's clear that there's a demand for much more flexibility and diversity in terms of qualifications in Ireland and equally across Europe and further afield. It's noticeable that micro-credentials are mentioned in a number of places within the, the new strategy, including a commitment to introduce new micro-credentials within the framework of qualifications by 2024. This will provide learners with a range of opportunities and we at MicroCreds particularly welcome this new initiative. Congratulations to everyone in QQI. Now, next, we will move on to Dr. Barbara Brittingham, our second of our international speakers today, and also a QQI board member. Uh, she is President Emerita of the New England Commission of Higher Education, Massachusetts, and will provide us with the benefit of her vast experience in the US, Europe, and other countries. Thank you. Um, it's a pleasure to be here uh, with you all, and I want to congratulate QQI on this important statement of strategy. And what I want to do today is um, talk a little bit about how we look at things, how you look at things, and the, and uh, 
stress the commonalities of approaches that we have. Can we have the next slide, please? Um, thank you. Um, so this is the New England Commission of Higher Education. You see the six states in the northeast corner of the U.S. Um, NETIA credits about 200 institutions in these states, Ivy League, uh, Harvard, Yale, MIT, state universities, community colleges, um, niche institutions and in fields like art and music and engineering and health, liberal arts colleges, and the smallest institution, the Conway School of Landscape Design, which offers a one-year master's degree in landscape design to 18 students at a time. And NETCHI also accredits um, 12 American-style institutions in other countries. Um, do we have the next slide, please? So uh, American accreditation is a very decentralized system of higher education. Um, accreditation traces its roots to 1885 in New England, um, and that is in contrast to 1980, which is the year that the U.S. finally got a separate Department of Education in federal government. Um, so this is, uh, NETCHI is a private membership organization, and the decisions are made by a commission that includes representatives from member institutions, plus public members who neither they nor their immediate family have any connection with higher education. So it has a direct connection with the public. It's a self-regulatory system as a membership organization. It's voluntary, but there are real incentives, um, including access for, to students for federal financial aid, which in this last year was $235 billion. So it's a significant incentive there. Um, but the most important incentive, I think, and the most fragile, and here we certainly agree with QQI, is that public confidence that an accredited institution is one that the public can trust. Um, and that's a very fragile benefit that we need to um, rely on and pay close attention to all the time. Can we have the next slide, please? So this is a representation of the dual purposes of accreditation in the US. One is that public assurance of quality um, so that the public knows that an accredited institution is one that they can have confidence in to attend, to have their son or daughter or their cousin or brother attend. Um, and equally important, as you see in this balanced scale, is that the process itself promotes improvement in the college or university um, through the self-study, through the standards, through the peer review, and through the decision um, by the commission. Um, next slide, please. So in Ireland, um, you have a, a national government agency. In the US, we have this membership organization and the triad with the federal government and the state governments. You have a national framework of qualifications, which is fascinating, I think, to Americans. And we, we just have degree levels, and I've listed the four of them here. There's variation within each of them, but we have nothing approaching your national framework of qualifications. You have a developed system of further education. Um, the closest that we have to that is the non-credit work that's offered by community colleges, which a, a friend of mine calls the college you don't see because it's less visible. Um, and I'm watching with great interest the development of the education training boards and the process there. Um, similarly, your system of apprenticeships is um, more developed than the US. We have uh, Northeastern University here in the Boston area. Um, that has a, a system of cooperative education where students cycle through um, work and learning in, in an organized way in a five-year bachelor's degree program. And we have the beginning of corporations offering apprenticeships in new fields, uh, most notably cybersecurity. Um, for oversight of, of uh, private higher education, Ireland has the Learner Protection Fund. NETCHI has a very stringent financial monitoring of um, certain uh, private uh, providers and re the requirement of teach out plans where theirs are important. Um, next slide, please. So, but we have a lot of similarities and I, I would list at the top as the most important, that importance of public confidence in higher education through the, the strategies and work that we do, um, providing information for learners to make choices on where they wanna study and, and increased emphasis on work and careers and the future skills requirements, um, the transfer prior learning, the mobility, um, the cycling in and out of tertiary education, all, both of those have become increasingly important um, here over time, and I think in Ireland as well. And our partnerships, uh, communications, plan strategically, as is reflected in the statement of strategy. 
um, and more emphasis on online learning and rethinking the quality now that we have experience and certainly with COVID we have more experience than we were counting on with online learning and I think an increasing um, sophistication about what makes quality in online education. Um, more emphasis on short-term credentials and more visi visibility for them and figuring out when we do get to the other side, but uh, something that I think we're both working on now, what has COVID meant to further and higher education? And what have we learned from it? What, what, what changes have we made that will endure? So um, next slide, please. So this is um, in some ways a very short history of accreditation in the US, uh, moving from input to process to outcome. So in the beginning, uh, using this ex example here, looking at the library, are there enough books? If you go back several decades in the US, Snetchy had a standard telling them institutions how many books they had to have in their library, clearly an input um, standard. And then over time, asking if students are actually using the books um, and increasingly looking at outcomes, are students gaining the skills of information literacy through the books and other resources provided by the institution? Um, and are the quality, are the faculty well qualified and input standard? Is the curriculum appropriate? And moving through process to the good teaching practice and instruction and the feedback for students. Now, a, a huge amount of emphasis in the US is on the outcomes. Are students achieving the, the learning outcomes of the program and institution? Assessment um, and making sure that students are achieving those learning outcomes and that the assessment process is fed back into improvement is one of the probably the main emphasis in accreditation today. And next slide, please. What else is of concern here? Uh, we are an increasingly diverse society, and so there's a great deal of emphasis on diversity, equity, and inclusion. A friend of mine says diversity is being asked to the dance, and inclusion is being asked to dance. Um, we're concerned here about the decreasing number or percentage of men in higher education. So right now in the US, there are about three women in higher education for every two men enrolled, and women graduate at a higher rate. I mentioned assessment of learning outcomes, extremely important. Affordability is a concern here, completion rates, and uh, the demographic cliff, which I have called, um, which means that the number of traditional age students in higher education will decline sharply in about 2026 as a result of lower birth rate during the Great Recession. Um, and whether that enrollment numbers can be made up by increased emphasis on lifelong learning is to be determined. And then finally here, uh, competency-based education, which looks at um, measures student progress, not so much by the amount of time that they have spent or credits that they have earned, but the competencies that they have demonstrated. And, th and that goes back to the emphasis on assessment. That's a real challenge, um, but it's a fascinating one. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, I think one thing that we both have learned <laughs> is to expect the unexpected. If there's one um, overarching um, learning from COVID, I think that is that it, it certainly was unexpected. Um, and I think higher education in Ireland and in the US have shown a, a great response to that. Um, we're not known for changing quickly, but I think um, in both Ireland and the US, higher education and further education have demonstrated that they can respond and keep the emphasis on the learner and on the partnerships. And next slide, please. And here's something important to, to all of us. I think here are wolves howling at the moon and one of them says to his colleague there, my question is, are we making an impact? And I think that's the bottom line for uh, Nechi in the US and for QQI. And I think the strategy um, does that extremely well. So I thank you. Um, it's, and I congratulate QQI on its statement of strategy. Thank you so much, Barbara. So now our statement of strategy is officially being launched. Thank you very much. Laura has popped it into the chat. Um, you can find it on the QQI website and it will, of course, be circulated to all attendees following um, this event. So now we have some um, further brief um, video reflections from the provider's perspective. Thank you. 
on behalf of Professor Kirsten May, President, University of Limerick. At a time where higher education, nationally and internationally, is undergoing significant change, the launch of the QQI strategy 2022 to 2024 attains particular importance for all learners in further and higher education in Ireland, the post-secondary education sector and its institutions, as well as its political stakeholders. In an expanding and more complex landscape of higher education providers, quality assurance and enhancement and academic integrity are vital for maintaining and growing the international reputation and attractiveness of the Irish higher education system. Information about opportunities for all learners and QQI's role in gathering, analysing and sharing these are important for supporting access to further and higher education, progression and student success as the emphasis on learning throughout the lifespan grows. The accelerated digitisation, including the learning from COVID-19 pandemic and the growth and enhancement of learning technologies drive opportunities for innovation in higher education, including how the growing need for flexibility and personalisation can be addressed through an integrated post-secondary education system. This requires renewed consideration for the ways in which learning is facilitated, pathways are created and assured, and learning attainment is supported and evidenced through appropriate forms of robust assessment and accreditation within a rapidly changing knowledge society. The strategic partnership working between QQI and further and higher education providers and their interest groups, industry collaborators, employers and professional bodies, as well as in the community and in government is welcomed, and it will ensure that the learning experience students have no matter what their background is, will be relevant, future-facing and of assured quality. The objectives outlined in the QQI strategy 2022 to 2024 offer a clear agenda for the work with the sector and key stakeholders over the next three years to meet the challenges ahead. Congratulations, Parag, to you and the team for today's launch event. We're delighted to see the strategy and the priorities outlined within it for the next three years. As an institution that's committed to changing lives through education, the focus on learners at front and centre is great to see. We particularly are pleased to see the emphasis on accessibility, transparency and flexibility, um, and look forward to working with you and the team on those initiatives as they roll through in the three year period. As a provider, we're delighted also to see the ability for mature private providers to proceed toward delegated authority and look forward to engaging with you and the team on the international education mark. And finally, just to reiterate, the emphasis on partnership working continuing in this three year period is pleasing for us to see. Obviously, we very much appreciate uh, the relationship that we have with you and your team and the partnership working that we've been doing for many, many years, um, particularly through the difficult COVID period. And we very much look forward to working with you on the team um, as we all implement the strategic priorities over the coming three years. Congratulations again, and we very much look forward to working with you on these as they're implemented in the three year period. Congratulations. Hello, my name is Vincent Canadian. I'm the inaugural president of the Technology University of the Shannon and the chair of the Technological Higher Education Association, THEA. And I'm very pleased to make this contribution on behalf of TUS and THEA. 2021 has shaped up to be a remarkable year in Irish higher education, not just because of the demands of COVID, but because we are now seeing an entirely new type of higher education institution being established on a new landscape with the launch of two new TUs and the announcement of two others. We are now closing the year with QQI's statement of strategy, which also reflects the quickly evolving nature of higher education in Ireland. I would like to congratulate QQI on a very significant 10 years of existence. QQI is an anchor point for Irish higher education as a whole helping to ensure that the core of what we are about, academic standards and the adaptability to respond to societal need are embedded effectively. Indeed, the country's IOTs and now the TUs 
are built on a heritage of proven academic quality. And that heritage of academic quality is central to our reputation. And as we move from a position of delegated authority to designated awarding body, which in and of itself brings new powers and also new responsibilities, we need a different approach from QQA. The expansion by QQA into new priority areas has never been more important as the system evolves and changes. What QQA is setting out to do is nothing less than ensuring continued confidence in our higher education system. And this statement is a tangible reflection of where policy is now going in Ireland, both in terms of a more outward looking system and a system that whose integrity must not be taken for granted. This statement is a great signal from QQA as to their future direction and focus. Working together in partnership with higher education institutions, allowing for more agile responses, and as such future proofing QQA. Indeed, the informative policy by QQA is crucial, made all the more pertinent by the emergence of the technology universities, and the imperative to retain diversity within that higher education system in order to meet the different demands of learners stakeholders and the state as a whole. Ensuring that diversity should be a central tenant of QQA's objectives. Success for QQA in this statement of strategy will be success for us all, both inside and outside higher education. We welcome the partnership approach being espoused by QQA and we in THEA will be working closely with QQA and supporting you along the way at a time when delivery and assessment modes are constantly evolving. Thank you all so much for all of our contributors today. It has been absolutely fantastic to hear from so many from across our sector, both here and abroad. Uh, we have so many more stakeholders that we didn't hear from today. But we do so appreciate their support and are really looking forward to working together um, as we implement this new statement of strategy. So finally, we have a message from our student survey manager, Dr. Siobhan Nilonika, and then Keith Moynes is also going to read a statement on behalf of the Minister for Further and Higher Education, Simon Harris. There is a strong relationship between QQI and studentsurvey.ie and the intersections between the work of studentsurvey.ie and the QQI values are evident to me when I reflect upon the QQI strategy. The emphasis on collaboration, partnership and inclusion situates the priorities of QQI by committing to include all voices and experiences, including those of students. The emphasis on evidence-based policies, procedures and activities informed by national and international good practice assure me that studentsurvey.ie and PGR studentsurvey.ie, our two national surveys of student engagement, will be seen as a valuable part of that evidence pipeline. A third value which aligns most closely with studentsurvey.ie is in having impactful ambitions. Impact is at the heart of studentsurvey.ie. Collecting student feedback is part of the process. It must also include using that feedback to enhance the experience of all students in higher education. Of key importance is the explicit naming of partnership, including student partnership and the inclusion of the voices of students as an enabler of the QQI strategy. I look forward to working more closely with QQI and the student survey study participating institutions to drive forward the associated objectives and key performance indicators. The results of studentsurvey.ie and PGR studentsurvey.ie 2021 in particular are so valuable as they give us insights into the thoughts, concerns, preferences and experiences of nearly 50,000 experts in what it was to be a student during COVID-19. There are many more opportunities for collaboration between QQI and studentsurvey.ie to ensure that all quality assurance and enhancement which relates to students is informed by students. I congratulate my colleagues and friends in QQI on the launch of this comprehensive strategy.
thanks very much, Megan, for for introducing. And thanks for expertly guiding us through uh, through the morning. Uh, I'm Keith Moynes, I'm Assistant Secretary General in the Department of Further and Higher Education, Research, Innovation and Science. I want to start by offering Minister Harris's apologies. He he was very anxious to be here, but unfortunately he uh, he's been unavoidably detained by government business. Um, Joanne and Porig and their introductions. Um, both mentioned the concept of partnership as a core principle of QQI's approach. And certainly we found since the establishment of the department that QQI has been a key strategic partner for us. Their remit extends across all further and higher education, including research and both public and private sector provision. And I think the diversity of stakeholder uh, engagement this morning speaks to that. As the only agency to span all these areas, QQI has a critical role to play in the development and enhancement of Ireland's tertiary education system. Because of this broad remit, as a department, we're especially keen to see QQI's new strategy develop and take shape. In launching the strategy, there's three points we'd, we'd like to touch on. First, there's the central role of quality in underpinning everything that is good in our education system. Since its establishment over almost 12 years ago, 10 years ago, QQI has driven this core agenda by working in partnership with education providers to build a strong quality assurance infrastructure at both national and institutional level, while continually supporting the effort of the enhancement of standards. To, if the importance of this work needed to be illustrated, then the last 18 months have done just that. David Jones referenced in his contribution the challenges of qualifications and quality regulators over the period of the pandemic. But QQI has shown enormous commitment and resourcefulness over the course of, uh, of our time dealing with COVID-19 to support and enable our sector to safeguard the integrity of the qualification system while ensuring that learners continue to receive a high quality academic experience in deeply challenging times. Secondly, and looking forward to QQI's key priorities for the next three years, we particularly note the goal of enabling a system of education training which provides opportunities for all. This will be a really important factor in delivering the department's key objectives, uh, which is to develop an integrated, connected higher education system that provides training and education uh, opportunities for everyone in an inclusive way. And we see QQI as having a transformational role in this regard by driving developments in areas such as access, transfer and progression, recognition of prior learning, and the wider use of, of micro-credentials within the national framework of qualifications. This strategy highlights the great potential across both higher and further education and apprenticeships for wider transition pathways and for the opening up of the system to greater diversity. And finally, we welcome QQI's commitment to enabling local, regional and national education and training bodies to build both programmes and training opportunities in a dynamic manner. This will enable the sector to respond rapidly to current and projected skills needs, which will be a crucial factor in Ireland's economic and social recovery post COVID. But the Minister and we in the Department very much welcome the exciting strategy. And we'd like to commend the board, management and, and staff of QQI about the breadth of vision shown and the mission set out to achieve a system of high quality and valued qualifications in Ireland. We look forward to working closely with colleagues in QQI and stakeholders across the system to achieve these shared objectives and realising the ambition of the strategy. So thank you and congratulations to QQI. Thanks, Megan. Thank you very much, Keith. Um, so that's that's it for us today. Thank you so much for your time. Um, as was said earlier, this statement of strategy is indeed timely. Um, I'm not going to repeat what's already um, been said, but I know I'm not alone in really looking forward to what the next three years and the following decade have to hold. So I hope you all have a lovely evening. Thank you for your time. <laughs>